So that being said, welcome. Um, I'm not really sure where you are all coming from as far as spinners go. So I don't want to make any assumptions, but my, um, I guess the, the way that I was going to present tonight was that you are already familiar with the, the act and art of spinning, right? So you understand the process that um, wool requires twist to turn into yarn. So I'm not going to really be speaking too much to the actual um, the you know techniques or or things of that nature as far as far as um, spinning itself goes right like drafting and, and whatnot I'm going to really be focusing more on the mechanical um, features and benefits of the spinner and so I'm going to switch over now so you can see I have a little agenda right. so there we go so that's that's my agenda um, so I'm going to kind of run through all of the things that I thought a potential electric spinner might be interested in learning so maybe you are a drop spindler or a wheel spinner and you've never um, you know used an electric spinner before or maybe you're somebody that you know has one and you'd get, like to get a little bit more familiar or know a little bit more about it, you know how it works, that sort of thing. So those are um, going to be, you know how how I'm going to be um, approaching tonight. But I'm going to cover all of these points. Okay, so I'll talk about the cost involved for someone that maybe doesn't have one yet. I'm going to talk about the tensioning and and how that works. Um, you know, bobbins, the directions, all of, all of the things you see on the agenda I'm going to cover, okay? Now also what I'm going to cover, so let me come back because I like the face-to-face. -face. Um, the other thing that I'm going to be covering are, are two different models, okay? So I'm going to switch over so you can see over here I have an overhead camera. So I have a little camera, so I feel like I can have a conversation with you. Um, but this is kind of like my my work area, so you can see the the tools and equipment. Sometimes it'll be easier for me to switch back to the other camera so that I can you know hold it in place, so you can see the entire um, spinner. So I think I'll just start with that to introduce to you the two pieces of equipment that I'm going to be sharing with you tonight. Switch back, and I appreciate your patience as I'm also the, the camera woman. I'm like a, a one a one man band. I'm a one woman spinner. Okay, so this over here, if you've if you've never seen one like this before, this is um, a Hansen spinner. And this one, um, I would say it's like the the basic model. It this this one as far as like the type of wood, it's it's cherry. And I got this one in I'm gonna say like 2010 you know, maybe something like that, 2000, yeah, probably 2010, maybe a little bit earlier. Um, and so I had started off, my first spinning wheel was a Magicraft, but I did start as a drop spindler. And after having the Magicraft, I then, um, I had a, a Jensen production wheel. I had all of these different um, types of wheels. I had pocket wheel, I had, um, you know, I just, I tried all of these different wheels out, but I, I really loved the electric wheel. So this was my first one. Okay. As far as like my electric spinner. Ooh. And then the other one that I have to share with you tonight, I have it on a little stand. So I'm just going to try to hold it up so you can see this is the electric eel wheel nano. And so this one, um, is I would say it's like on the, the cheaper end, as far as spinners go, I got it recently you know, with um, traveling in mind and teaching workshops and the portability. Now, both of them are portable, but the um, the Hansen, this one, I think at the time it ran about $1,200. So I'm not sure what they go for now, but I also got it with the, the Wooly Winder. So if you've never, if you've never used a Wooly Winder, um, it's basically, let me see if I can hold it so you can see it. So, so the way that it works, is that there is a little like um, cog and gear type of mechanism set up here so that every time the spinner spins this um, this eye hook goes up and down this rail over here and it, it loads it on so you'll be able to see it while i'm um, spinning and this way you don't have to stop and and the beauty of spinning on an electric spinner is that it puts all of the um like the the treadling and the inconsistencies of what you're doing with your feet like that that part kind of goes away and so i try to to use it when i want to spin really consistently 
Um, and that's probably the thing that, that I love the most about it, right? Is that I have a really good um, ability to like go at a steady speed with my feet, but depending upon my mood, depending upon the day, it could, it could change, it could, it could be varied. So the electric spinner, the, the biggest benefit I would say is that it's, it gives you a consistent amount of twist. So why would there be such a big difference in price point, right? Because the, the Hanson, like I said, when I got it was about 1200 and then the electric eel wheel nano, when I got that was about um, 200 with like all of the extra bobbins and things like that. So that's obviously like a, a huge um, price difference. And so there's different features and um, different, you know, components, right? So the Hanson is made of wood the electric eel nano is you know pretty much all 3d plastic printed parts so that's that's a big difference um the weights are also different so i love i love the hansen because it's very heavy um you know it's much lighter obviously than a spinning wheel but it's it's heavy enough that when i'm spinning it doesn't walk so i'm going to switch over to the other camera so you can actually like watch it in progress so basically um in order to get started right an electric spinner needs electricity so there's one of two ways you can power it you can use the adapter that plugs into the wall i guess there's three you can use the adapter that plugs into the wall um then you can also use a car charger so like if you're going camping or if you have like the lighter you know outlet one you can use that so so right now um i'm going to use the ac adapter cable for uh, my hands. Now, what's interesting about this one is that it also comes with a foot pedal, okay? Now, generally, I don't use my foot pedal as a foot pedal. I actually use it as a hand pedal because I like to keep the spinner on my lap, or rather, I like to um, keep the pedal on my lap so that the spinner is off to my left side. So that's also something else that's kind of a bit unusual um, that when you're spinning and let me switch back sorry i, I like to i feel like to feel like i'm having a, a face to face with you so typically when you're spinning right your orientation to the wheel is like it's it's right in front of you but the way that i like to spin is with the spinner on my left side and then i'll draw across my lap so i don't know if my camera will angle down so that you could see it let me go like that like that okay um but once once my spinner is set up so I'm just going to show you. So my spinner is over here, right on my desk. Let me see if I can get it to go down without <laughs> breaking the camera, because um, that would be good. So there's there's the spinner. And then how I like to spin is I'll sit sideways and then I'll go across my lap like that. Okay. And and I find that that doing that, um, I can move my arm a lot much more, like more comfortably. But also I can have it set up on a table to the left of me and then I can have my feet up on the couch. I can have a blanket on my lap and then I'll take the foot pedal that powers it and I'll click it. So I'll just show you real quick here. Um, so right now I'm taking the, the foot pedal because there's two ways you can set it up. You can put the foot pedal in first. So if I plug it in first, and then if I put the electric, um, the, the electricity part in, right? So if it's now powered. So what I'll do, I'll get my wool. Okay, so I got my wool. So I'm just gonna um, press the pedal. So then it starts to spin. And then like this will let's say be on my coffee table or like on a table to the left of me or just like how it is right now. And then what I like to do is go out like this. And so definitely for long draw, you know, I would I would recommend it, but I feel like it's a lot easier to to move my hand or swipe my hand across my lap rather than trying to look at it when it's farther away from me and then closer. Like right now, I'm staying the same distance away from myself. So it's just making it really easy for me to to check on the consistency um, of of the yarn that I'm spinning. So I just got a little nap right there. Um, but you can see, so, and if I wanted to do a long draw, I can even go here. Let me see if I can angle this up a little bit higher so you can see over here. Okay. So you can see like the, the spinner is like right here. So if I wanted to do, you know, long draw, I could really go for a long time. Now I know I'm not doing long draw because I'm trying to do this worsted, but I just wanted to show you as far as like how far out my arm can actually go when I'm spinning sideways, okay? So that's definitely one of the benefits or features that I really like of an electric spinner is that I don't have to have that traditional spinning wheel, 
like directly in front of me orientation. So the other thing that I was saying about the electricity part is that if you choose to put the um, electricity in first, so hang on, let me break the wool and feed it on. Okay, so if you choose to, you can, you can actually switch and make it so that um, it's called like a, a dead man spinner where like your, um, your spinner just goes without having the pedal, like it's just on and then you can change the, change the speed of it. So if I have the electricity going in first, it's just gonna, it's just gonna spin. And it's not on the top part, so you can't see what I'm saying. Hang on one second, my bad, let me switch over. So if I, if I take, ooh, okay. So if I, if I take out this part here, so this is the pedal, right? This is the pedal part. So if I take, if I take this out, you can see it's just gonna go, okay? Um, and if I want it to stop, I have to unplug it or, or change the speed. But if I have the pedal going in first and then the electric um, source, then, then it doesn't do that. And then I can turn it on and I can, I can tap it off. So I just really like this for sitting on the couch and spinning. So unfortunately, um, this little guy does not come with a pedal. And so because of that, the way that you change this to on or off is over here on the side, there is a little um, you know, knob or a dial that you turn. And then when you turn it, it basically um, powers it on. So it's, it's more, I would say inconsistent because you never know like where you're gonna have the speed set to. So I'll, I'll show you what I mean with that, okay? So for this guy, um, well, this one was is plugged into the wall, but this one I'm going to use a battery pack. Now, let me um, come back so I can talk to you about batteries. So there's different there's different battery options. Um, when I first started spinning, I got this Anchor one, and like I said, it was probably in like 2010, maybe 2009 that I got the electric one. And this battery pack, um, I went up to Canada to do the spinning certificate program. And I think in like year three is when I started bringing my electric spinner. And I loved it because I could pretty much spin any type of yarn that they were asking of me um, on my electric spinner. So this battery pack was awesome because I could go from like nine in the morning to four in the afternoon and I could spin and it wouldn't need to be recharged. So that was awesome. Um, but you know, it, it only like holds a charge. I would say um, maybe I could get like three or four days before it would be completely dead and then I'd have to recharge it. So then this one, why, why I like this one is that um, this, this one on the side, you can change it to nine volt or 12 volt, but these, these two spinners take different voltages. So the Hansen uses 12 volt and then the, um, the electric eel wheel nano that uses nine volts. And I like this one because there's a little um, button here that not only can you power it on, but you can toggle between the voltages. So not only does it do nine and 12 volt, but I think it does 16 and 20. So if you have like, if you're someone that likes to go camping or, you know, go places where you're not near electrical outlets, um, you can use this, I think, for also charging, you know, your phone and your laptop. So it's kind of nice for traveling. I know you can do the same as well. And, and I would say weight wise, they kind of feel the same. This one is a bit bulkier and the battery packs generally run from like 50 to $60. Um, and so I just, I really love that you can bring it to guilds, meetings, workshops, you know, and you don't necessarily need to be near an outlet. So for this one, I'm going to use the battery pack to power it, okay? So let me show you how that works. Okay, so the battery pack is charged. And now I'm going to take this cable over here and I'm going to plug it in. So this one, I have it um, mounted to a board because like I said, this one is made of a nice heavy wood and it doesn't walk on me, but this might walk. So um, I'm just gonna leave it attached to the board for now, um, just cause I wanna, I wanna spin on it to show you. Okay, so the first one, the first battery pack is an anchor. And then the second one is called, I think a power ad or yeah, pa power ad. So let me see if I can show you no okay wait hang on this way <laughs> this one right there pa power ed that's the, that's the name of that battery right there okay so i'm going to take this one and plug it in now if the battery pack 
is powered off. Okay, so it's powered off. It's not going to spin, obviously. But as soon as I turn the battery pack on, if I have my spinner set to something other than all the way down and not putting any twist in, it's going to start going. Okay, so here, let me take it off the board because it's a little bit awkward and cumbersome. If it starts to work, I'll turn it back on. But I just want you to see, okay, so the battery pack is off, right? The battery pack is off and it's plugged in. So obviously it's not going. Now I'm going to turn it up. So the speed there, as soon as I turn on the battery pack, it's going to automatically go. So the only way that I can turn this one off technically, like not spinning is to, to power it down. And why I don't like that is because if let's say I know that I want my dial at 12 o'clock to put in the amount of twist that goes in when the dial is turned to 12 o'clock, I might, you know, get it like 1130, I might get it at 130. So I might not be consistent in where I keep twisting the dial. So that's one feature that I really love about the Hansen is that I set it to the speed I want and then I don't have to worry about it. Okay. Um, sometimes, you know, depending upon if I'm going back and forth between different projects, I might like take a picture as far as like where the dial is, you know, just to remember the, the speed setting. But this one, it's kind of inconsistent in going back and forth. Now, if you don't have it going on, sometimes what also will happen is the battery pack will turn off. And so that's kind of annoying that you have to keep turning the battery on and off. So sometimes people will take, um, they have these like little LED lights or like these little like USB lights that you can like plug in so that it's constantly drawing power, but it's not drawing a lot of power. So your battery doesn't turn off. But when it's plugged into the, the wall, you don't have to worry about that. So I, I like the, the battery for the portability, but as far as the consistency of staying on, it doesn't really do that. So as far as this little guy works, okay, so I'm going to go and get some fiber. I got some fiber behind me. Okay, so when I go to turn this on again, I'm going to turn my battery pack on and it's going to spin. Okay, now this one is a little bit finicky as far as the tension goes. And I'll talk about the tensioning with you in a second. Let me just get this, um, you know, going so that you can see how it works. Okay, so it's pretty much the same as the Hansen. You know, it's putting twist in, right? But the problem is, is that if I'm pulling on it, do you see how it's like, I have to be, I have to have a very gentle hand. I can't, I can't like pull, otherwise it, it can, it can walk. So that can be frustrating. And then again, if I want to turn it off, I have to turn the dial down. So sometimes what I like to do, like I said, is I like to take, um, you know, um, uh, a clipboard and, and I'll use a, a bull clip to kind of anchor it. Um, I also can show you different carrying cases that I have. So let me come back to the face to face. So I can show you some carrying case um, options that I have because it has little parts in it that I like to use as far as my spinning goes. So before I get too far ahead of myself, let me just go check back in on my agenda. Okay, so I talked about the price point. So now let me talk a little bit about the tension because the electric eel wheel nano, the tensioning band that it came with, I didn't really care for it. It, let me see if I can unplug this to show you. Okay, so I don't know if you can see on the side here, I kind of made up my own little tensioning system. So normally it's almost like a hair tie or an elastic that goes in this little, there's like a little crack or crevice. Let me see if I can get it on this camera to show you. So there's like a little crack or crevice right there, right? And then it goes over, over the um, top of the bobbin. So it's just a scotch tension, but I like scotch tension that has, um, you know, a knob or a dial to it. So the way that I modified mine was I went to the hardware store and I got these like super heavy duty magnets. And then I got this washer um, that's like, you know, also um, kind of not a washer, but it's like a, it's a magnet, but it look, I'll, I'll just show you here. See, so it's like a magnet that has like a hole in it so that when I put the screw inside of the washer, I can then turn it and then it acts like scotch tension, you know, like a, a tensioning dial as opposed to the band that came with it. Cause I really didn't care for, for that. It wasn't um, as consistent as I wanted it to be when, when I was trying to tension it. So for tensioning on 
and then go back to, to show you on the overhead screen. So when when you tension um, the the Hansen one, I really I really like it. It's super it's super easy. There's just a little dial on the side. You turn it, you know, forward, backward, and the it, it kind of the mechanism is built inside, so it goes over here like it goes inside and then there's a little cable that that comes up it just goes over the bobbin and then um down on the other side is the spring so there's like a spring down right in there um so as far as the tensioning if i'm going to go hansen versus electric eel um electric eel wheel nano hansen hansen wins okay so that's definitely another um feature about it that i like is the tensioning is consistent and it's easy so the next point um, was changing the bobbins. Okay, so how do you how do you change the bobbins on on these spinners? Well, to do that for the Hansen, it's got this neat little like metal kind of um, latch system. So if I press down on it, the back part opens up super easy. You just take the tension band off, and then you can just go ahead and slide your bobbin off. Okay, and then put the put the next one on. So that's that's super easy. As far as the Nano goes, again, it's a little bit more fiddly because it is a 3D printed piece. So for this one, um, what you have to do is take off the, the tension band. Okay, so you take, you take that off. And then it sits in a little like cradle here. There's like a, a ball bearing that it kind of sits in a cradle there. And then you also have this rubber this rubber band right over here. So you just take that off like so, and then it comes up. So the whole thing, the whole thing um, comes out of the cradle. You would then remove the, um, the bearing and then you would slide the bobbin off, put another one on, put this one back on. So again, it's all very like, I'm trying to think of how to describe it. Like everything about it is totally functional but it's like the difference between cooking in a regular oven versus like one of those toy kitchen ovens. Like, yes, it works. Yes, it heats up and yes, it can cook stuff. But to me, it doesn't um, do it as easily or as well as one that's actually made for that. So this is kind of like a fun little, I would say it's, it's almost like a toy, like a toy version. I mean, it works, it's functional, but it's, it's a little bit frustrating. I, I wouldn't, even though it's cheaper, I would say that it could be more frustrating to a beginning electric spinner because it's so fiddly. But if you have patience for it, then it's great. Okay, so the next point on the wheels or the spinners rather that I wanted to talk to you about was the direction, right? Because on a wheel, you just pretty much change, you know, the way that the drive wheel is spinning and, and a drop spindle, you change that. But for the spinners, um, there's a little, tab like a little um switch here so when it's going to the right that is z twist when it is neutral okay so now it's like in the center so now it's not going to um go anywhere and then if i go to the left now it's going to put s twist in so very simple to change spinning directions the same on the nano okay so there's a little z and s switch here you just um toggle between the two so as far as both of those go for twist direction, pretty simple. I would say equal points for both. Ne neither are too complicated. So then for ratios and twists, right? How do you figure that out when you are spinning on an electric spinner if you don't have typical, um, you know, whirls or, or bobbins that, you know, you, you use? So what I would suggest doing is counting by the seconds, okay? So if you count um, five seconds and then examine your yarn, you can see how much twist is going in in that time. So if you want more twist, obviously wait longer. If you want less twist, you could move your hands faster. But you can also change the twist with these dials, okay? So this one goes all the way down to no twist. So I like to, when I'm spinning, have mine generally between like 11 and 12. Maybe if I'm going to be doing plying, I'll even go I'll even go as as high as like you know one o'clock maybe, um, but I would say that this is like the range that that I like to be in, and so for a spinning wheel, I would say that that would probably be the equivalent maybe of like a fifteen to one um, ratio, 
whirl. And then again, for this one, you turn the dial, but it's also how you have to turn it off or power it off. So if you want to, I think there's also um, a dead man neutral. So you can go Z and then you can push it like in the middle between the two. And that will also be the off position. So technically you don't have to do the dial, but if you're spinning and you need to like get to it quick to make it stop, you know, turning the dial this way is easier than flicking this little switch because it's not, it's not as easy to do. Okay. Um, yeah, so there's there's definitely a range in prices between um, the spinners, and there's a whole bunch that are in between, right? So I would say that this is the cheapest one that is the most functional, right? So that like you can actually like use it as a spinner, and then this is probably like the high end one. Um, but honestly, like I've had such a wonderful experience with this one that I've sold all of my spinning wheels. And it's really the only one that I need and use. So this, like I said, was just kind of a, a thing where if I'm gonna travel and I don't want this to get damaged because of how expensive it is, I can bring this little guy with me to do demonstrations and it, it'll, it'll work for me just fine. Um, but this one is like my all time favorite. And you know, I've had, I've had the privilege of spinning on lots of different types of, of wheels and stuff like that, but this, this guy is my favorite. So let's see. Okay, so I talked about the ratios and twist. Oh, so now another thing, and this can apply, I guess, to a regular spinning wheel too, but one little thing that I like to have on my electric spinner, because there aren't too many, you know, handles or extra parts, I like to put a little piece of Velcro down on the bottom so that when I want to stop spinning, I can just um, set my yarn there. So I have a little one on the Nano as well. So just a neat little tip, just put a little piece of Velcro and it can hold your yarn when you're not spinning, just like that. See, so then it just goes there. Okay, so then I talked about the battery packs. So um, let me talk a little bit about the storage systems, okay? So as far as storage goes, let me switch over so you can see better. Hi. Um, so as far as the storage goes, um, I found in different groups that like have different suggestions of what to get. And this, this one by far to me is my favorite. So check it out. So I went to Walmart and I got a cooler and this cooler is, okay. It's an Arctic zone zipperless cooler and it's a 16 can capacity. Okay. So this one over here and why I love this one is because of a couple of reasons. First, it's got this, plastic bucket insert. So I've modified mine by drilling four holes on the front and then four holes on the back. And I made it so that I can have knitting needles as dowels to go through it. So I kind of have like a built in lazy Kate, um, tension lazy Kate. And to make it tensioned, I just put a screw on this side. That was the leftover one from my tension, my tension, my scotch tension um, screw and then a hole on this side. And then I've also got these little suction cups. And so I can just kind of give a tug on it and then attach the suction cup to the outside. And now I have a tension um, lazy cape that can accommodate up to four bobbins. So that's kind of cool. But when I don't want it to be a lazy cape, all I have to do is pull the, pull the needle out and then everything goes back inside the bucket. So that's kind of neat. So in here, you know, obviously the spinner is super tiny, right? It can go, it can go in here. Um, I can also fit in all of the bobbins. I can fit in fiber, the, um, the, the battery pack, all of that good stuff can go in there. But what I like about this specific model of cooler is that it comes with a little um, soda tray so that like the soda is like separate from everything on the bottom. So check this out. It's got this little, this little tray and have these, these um, suction cups, okay? So what I like to do, so I'm gonna switch over to show you, is I like to have the suction cups on the bottom of the spinner. So on the, on the bottom of the spinner, it's got like these little holes. And so what I do is I take the suction cup, right? And I put it the other way, sorry. I put the suction cup like this in here. And so that makes it so that I can attach it to a table. But if I wanna use it with my tray, what I do, like, and I always do it the wrong way. 
So I think I like to do it like this. Yeah. Okay. So I have it where it's going upside down. So then like normally the tray sits like this, right? So I, so I turn it, I turn it like this and then I always do it backwards, especially like if I'm on camera, I'm going to forget and think that I'm doing it the right way. So just bear with me, but I have the suction cup going down and then I'll stick it in one of these holes. Okay. So the suction cup is on this side, but then the little um, nipple part of the suction cup is sticking through. And then I stick that into the little um, space, like the slot of the spinner. So let me just get it in and you can see, okay. So that it's going in like so. Focusing. There you go. Okay. So now it's kind of like locked in and I'll do this with all four of the foot holes. And this way it'll be nice and anchored in and I can then take the suction cups and either attach it to a table or um, use the clamp. But see now it gives it like a little stand to go on and I can weight this down. I can put, you know, my, my battery pack on it. So now it gives it the weight that was on um, the Hanson. It can, it can make it a little bit sturdier and it won't walk as much. So that's just kind of like a neat little feature that I like about it. Another uh, about specifically like getting that, that type of cooler. Another thing that I like about um, this little guy is it comes with a built in or not built in, but it comes in with this like little magnetic um, hook, right? So I can easily go, you know, and, and get, get my yarn and it's, it's, mag it's magnetic. So it just sits right there. So you never lose your hook. Whereas the one that came with the Hanson, for some reason, I, I always lose this one. Okay. So I know you can obviously use whatever orifice hook you want. Um, but this one, you know, it's, it's really nice because of how skinny it is. So it's, it's almost like this like plastic, I don't know, it's just very um, malleable. And why that's nice too, is because on my Hanson, I got an orifice reducer. So you can spin bulky, thick yarns, or if you want to spin finer yarns, like lace weight yarns, I like the orifice reducer. So I'll go and I'll take it out just so you can see. So see, it comes out easily and now I can spin and accommodate really thick yarn. So it's a very, very versatile um, spinner, especially when you have it with the, um, the, the woolly winder, those, those two make a great, a great team. So talked about the storage container for the nano. So now I can talk to you about the storage container for the Hansen. So um, the one that I saw recommended a lot was um, getting this Zuka bag. So it's, it's basically like um, a little rolling suitcase for ice skaters. So this is what mine looks like. So this is, this is it over here. Um, and what I've done is I put this like styrofoam padding. So let me see if I can pick it up high enough for you to see. There's like a little um, kind of, wait, I'm trying to get it to be in front of the camera. So I got this styrofoam padding that I cut out a little, you know, crater for it. And it, it just keeps it really nice and um, padded on the bottom because I don't want anything to happen to it. And then it's got like, you know, little features on the side so you can put things like your nitty knotty in it. Um, it pretty much holds all my tools. I have um, a Nancy's Knick Knacks lazy, you know, traveling lazy Kate that disassembles and goes in there. So pretty much I want all of my equipment to be portable if I'm ever going, like I said, to guild or workshops, but I really love, I really love that for um, traveling because it's got, you know, enough squishiness and softness on the inside, but then it's got like a metal frame to kind of keep everything reinforced. So I went over the weight. So now as far as like the maintenance goes, like how do you take care of them? Where do you oil them? It's kind of similar to a spinning wheel, you know, wherever there are moving parts you want to oil. So I'm going to switch over to the screen so I can show you so over here. Um, when, whenever I go to oil my spinners, you know, for the, um, for the woolly winder, you would just do it in the, the track in there, but it doesn't really take much as far as, here, let me just unplug this to be able to be more portable. Um, you know, I'll just put a little bit of oil, you know, on the, um, the shaft of the, the flyer, right? So I'll just put, I'll put some oil over here um, and I'll put some oil like where it sits on the inside, but that's pretty much it. It doesn't really need a lot of oil except for the, for the woolly winder to keep it functional. And then for the nano, 
Um, I just like to put a little bit of oil again on the fly. Now, one thing that um, people suggested, because sometimes the nano can be very loud and it can make a lot of noise. So sometimes they say that, you know, you need to take like sandpaper and sand down because when it's printed with the plastic, sometimes the, um, the, the printer might leave like little burrs or like little pieces of the plastic sticking up. So you might have to sand them down um, or they'll say to take like scotch tape and wrap it around the shaft of the flyer because it just makes a loud clinking and clanking noise. So as far as like the sound of it, if you're someone that gets really irritated by, you know, the loud squeaky wheel at Guild, um, definitely the Nano is, is louder than the Hansen. So as far as like sound, um, you know, goes, like the Hansen also wins in, in that category. But overall, you know, if you just wanna try it out, see if you like it, um, I think it's, it's, a great, it's a great little, um, you know, spinner to have. But if you're someone that's like really serious about spinning and maybe you have, you know, ankle injuries or if you have something that, you know, makes you want to um, spin more because it's it's not only great for plying, but it's it's also great, like I said, for for spinning. I know some people really love the rhythmic qualities that a spinning wheel has, you know, as far as like your feet going and, and spinning that way. But I don't know, for me. I don't, I don't miss it when I can have the, the blanket on my legs, you know, if I'm lucky enough, some, some cats will come and hang out with me and it'll just, it'll just be a really fun thing to spin, you know, on, on the couch without having to, to have my feet down. So someone asked, yeah, so as far as the oil goes, um, the, the Hansen came with this oil over here. Anyway, yeah, it's called, it's called Super Lube. It says multi-purpose synthetic base oil with PTFE. So it says ideal for hunting, fishing, hobby, household, marine, and automotive. And it comes in this neat little pen. And then you just kind of open it up and then, you know, take this off and kind of dab it in. So I like the applicator. Um, other times I'll use these ones. I think it's like the one that everybody has. I just don't have it. Here, wait, it's in my, because it's in my case. See that? I like to keep the tools that I use because I use I use the one that came with the Hanson for that one, but then I'll just use um, they have usually like spinning um, not spinning um, sewing machine oil, and I'll just I'll just keep it in this little bottle. You know, sometimes you can get these at fiber festivals like right back. <laughs> so maybe there's a vendor that has one, um, but that's that's one that I use just to kind of keep it lubricated. You know, because it is moving parts. You wanna you wanna take care of your spinners. So is there anything that anybody would like to see or um, you know know more about if you have any questions I have had a lot of trouble I spin on a wheel all the time okay but I've had a lot of trouble getting started with my nano because I don't understand those hooks and also recently I'll just tell you my second question real quick is um, besides the hooks when I did it today, I've done it before once and it was fine, but it's so tight. Even when I have like no um, tension on the back one and on the front one, it looks like I should be able to adjust it with a, a Phillips screwdriver, but I don't know how to do that. Okay, so can you hold it up to the camera and just point oh, to me, yeah. which, which area are you saying that you're having a difficulty with the tension? Um, yeah, first of all, this is so tight. Oh, okay. So yeah, so, so like as far here, let me, let me switch over um, back to the speaker view for a second. So I, cause I, I went to gallery so I could see what you were showing me. Um, so let me, let me show you on mine. Okay. Okay. So that's, that's like, a, see, this is, this is, this is what I'm talking about that the Hanson, like you open it up and it's just, it's, it's happy. It's good to go. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't need any, um, you know, fiddling with, but the Nano, it needs a little bit of finessing. It's kind of like, you know, you gotta, you gotta um, put on some nice quiet music for it. You know, it's, it's very particular. Okay. So as far as this, this piece of it goes, right. If you don't have this part here, where it's going in all the way, like this piece here. Let me see if I can take it off. Is that the orifice reducer? No, this doesn't have an orifice reducer. I have a white thing. Oh wait, then that's what it is. Yeah, okay. Then I guess it is the orifice reducer. I didn't know that. That's. I didn't know that. I. I. I didn't know that. That was the. Um, yeah. That, that that that's not the standard. You know what I mean? But yeah. So, okay. So if I take this off, 
Okay. All right. So yeah, so it, it looks it looks like that, right? Um, but when you put it when you put it back on, you want to make sure that it's really like it's it's going in flush, but you don't want it to to go in so hard that there's no gap between. You know what I mean? So just to keep oh. like put like make it go out just a little bit, and then you won't have that extra friction. Okay. So I don't know if that's going to show up if you give it a second. Do you know what I mean? But like, you don't have to have that going in all the way. Also to check, because I know that there was something on the bottom piece that I had to do. I can't remember what, if this was like taking it out or not, but I know that there was definitely like modifications. Well, there's, there. there's, there's two little uh, Phillips screws there yeah. too. And it looks like they should do something because there's a picture there, but maybe not. <laughs> Um, that's just to hold the, um, the motor, but I know that I also changed my motor out. Oh, so this is, this is like the, the next level motor. This is like the version two. Oh, okay. So, so in order to accommodate the, the motor, you had to like, um, screw holes to make it a little bit wider, but the, the screws oh. are, yeah, the screws are for keeping the motor in place. Okay. So. Oh, okay. And then the next question was these crazy hooks. Yeah. So I don't really care for the hooks either. I went um, and I tried to make my own. Um, and then you can also buy, they have ones, I think these ones are maybe like, I don't know, like maybe $10 for um, a pack of like five or six or something. But Probably. I like them, but they don't, they don't really stay. They're not, they're not really as um, strong as like a wheel hook. I did try to make one out of silver wire. And so these ones are a little bit, you know, um, more sturdy. But yeah, I definitely don't like the hooks either. Are you supposed to use one or two at one time? Well, this one is a single two. one. It's no. just, yeah, this one is a single one. It's just how it's wrapped. I'm just waiting for it to go and focus for you. But um, this one, this one is a single one. Hang on. Right. I'm talking about the original one. See, there's like, yeah, you, well, you need to have one over here because otherwise it's going to be dragging against the bobbin. Right. So you would need to have one right. like over here so that it creates the path for the second one. So this okay. one is the one that moves. And then this is the one that just kind of keeps it out. Like if you put on, if you look on my Hanson, right, this, this um, eye hook over here, it always stays there. That doesn't move. That's stationary. Oh. But then the, the one on the woolly winder is the one that moves. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So you want that so that it, it's, it sticks off. Okay. Okay. Um, so then let's see. So another, another person said, I have a nano, but I always see, oh, is that you that said that? What? The leader? Oh, with the leader saying, put long enough to keep going? No, I didn't. Okay, okay. So yeah, so it says, I have a nano, but I always seem to have a hard time with the leader staying put long enough to keep going. What would you recommend is I feel like it's not um, frictiony enough compared to regular. Exactly, exactly. So um, two things. One, you want to upgrade to the stronger motor, right? Because the pull that a traditional wheel has is, you know, partly the tension, but it's also the fact that it's weighted, right? It's heavier. And so that's what I love about the Hansen is that it's got a heavy enough weight that, you know, um, it stays put. So for the nano, you want to get the stronger motor so that it's, it's like tug of war. You know, you want someone strong on the other side pulling against you um, to have the tension for your yarn. And two, you want to get it anchored down. So like I showed you, you know, using, using um, suction cups or clamps or something like that so that you can weight it down. That's going to that's gonna really help you. But if you weight it down and you have the weaker motor, then it might put more of a strain on it. So if you get the stronger motor, the weight and the stronger motor will help. The third thing I did on that is um, actually un undo the bobbin and kind of slip the thread underneath like one of the caps of the bobbin and then put it back on. And so there's a leader is like permanently attached to the bobbin. Oh yeah, I mean, you can definitely, you can definitely just do multiple knots. So as far as like the leader goes, um, Okay, so like this one doesn't have a leader right now, but if you give me a second, I can keep spinning around in my chair. I have ones that have a leader, so I can show I think you. she's talking about, if, the, if I'm hearing you right, you take off the end of the bobbin 
and stick the a piece of thread. You kind of stick the, an end of the leader or a piece of twine in, in between the, the crack between the bobbin and, and, well, uh, and the thing. See, why, why, why I wouldn't suggest doing that is because then your bobbin um, might get wonky because it has something that's kind of like yeah, you're probably right. it. So the way that I like to tie um, my leaders, I can, I can show you on this one over here. If you give me one second, I'll go grab my cotton. So whenever, whenever I tie a leader, I like to always start, hang on, let me switch over. Okay, so whenever, whenever I tie a leader, I always like to start by making a loop like this. Okay, so I'll, I'll take, I'll take um, cotton that's plied. So applied yarn is gonna always work better because this way you can ply from it or not. And then I'll just do an overhand knot like so. Okay, so I have, I have a loop like this, okay? I have, I have a loop. And then what I'll do is I'll take the bobbin and I'll drape the yarn over and I'll take my two fingers inside the loop and I grab it and I bring it through. Oh, nice. now, now, if I do this, right, it's going to wiggle and move. So I'll do maybe two or three knots. So the way that I do that is I wrap it around. So the way that it's going, um, I'm trying to see if I can show you and describe it. So this is where the loop is like this. Here, let me switch over to the other camera. It might work better. If not, I'll come back. Okay. So just so you can see. So over here, I have the loop like this, right? So what I'll do is I'll take it and I'll wrap the yarn around the shaft of the bobbin one more time and I'll pull it through this loop right over here, right? So I'll take it and I'll pull it through that way once. Okay, I went off camera, sorry. And then I'll go and I'll go in the other way. So I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna wrap it around like this. And then I'm gonna tuck it through that space right there. And so doing three or four um, wraps back and forth, now it's very secure because it's kind of like, I'm trying to think of the word. It's, it's got like friction or tension on, on both sides tugging it so that now, you know, you can see if I pull it, it's not, it's not moving. See what I'm saying? So when it goes, when it goes to um, wind my leader on, it's got enough grip there. I had one additional question about the Nano. I have one. Um, that's a great, I think that's a great tip about the leader. When you have the new motor, which I also have, um, do you find that uh, you have to, turn the dial as much to get good power. Um, I guess like what, you know, you said you worked between like 11 and one o'clock on the Hanson. Mm -hmm. What do you normally work between on the- um, Probably I would say like 11 or 12 o'clock, but um, again, I have it situated on the tray and I have the tray clamped to the top. So, so that's another thing that I do. So once, once I'm spinning, right? Like it depends where I'm spinning, but like if I'm taking it out, I'll take this whole, set up like this and then i'll put a clamp for the, for the lip the, that's right over there that little edge and i'll clamp that or i'll try to just clamp the whole thing so that now that this is suction cupped to the to the tray and the tray is clamped to something now now it won't move so it's kind of a combination between making sure that there's enough weight and grip to help it out and that's why i think it's really frustrating for new spinners or for new electric spinners because it requires so much finessing and coaxing to just work you know once it works it's great but trying to just get it to like cooperate another tip that i'm going to suggest to you for all spinning wheels um you know electric um treadle the nano is if you're ever having a tensioning issue sometimes what will happen is the bobbin, um, the, the place where the, the, the brake band goes, it'll, it'll get like super smooth. So in my like tool bag, I always keep a little piece of sandpaper. And then what I do is I'll fold it so that it's got like a little crease like this. And then I'll go and I'll kind of sand in, you know, that like this, this space, wait, like this, this, this little gap right there. So by, by sanding it, it gives it a little bit more tooth and grip so that when you are tightening the, um, the brake band, it won't be so slippery. And you can see that I've done that on the Hanson as well. Can you see how it's sanded down? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that just yeah. gives me a little bit more grip. And do you find that you usually do fine yarns on both things? Um, 
for both you know, electric um, spinners which tend to be better for fine yarns or do you find that you do a variety of things yeah i don't really i don't really spin art yarns or anything thicker than as far as like my singles go they're pretty fine but as far as like the thickest yarns i i spin might be like in the you know 14 wraps per inch range or so i don't i don't generally go much thicker than that It just depends what I want to do. I mean, I'll definitely do multiple plies. Like I'll do a three ply yarn, like over here. Um, this is about, you know, a sock weight, a sock weight yarn. Um, but yeah, I tend to spin finer. I think, um, I mean, I can spin thick. It's just that as far as like the things that I like to make, I don't, I don't like to make things with art yarns. I like to make things with, I guess like, um, you know, between fingering and worsted weight is my happy place. But if you were going to spin thicker, I would definitely suggest, um, you know, the the Hanson again, because it's got the, the larger orifice and the bobbins can they have an eight ounce capacity. So you can really get a lot more on the Hanson, whereas the bobbin capacity, I think, on the Nano maybe is like one and a half to two ounces. So, you know, you can get you can get a lot more. Okay, so then the question came up, how do you clean the woolly winder? I just follow the directions that came in the, um, you know, with the woolly winder. So basically, you know, you just go and you take the screw, there's like, a, sorry, there's like a little screw over here. So you, you undo that and then you pull the arm out and, you know, you just follow the directions um, that they came in the packet. They give you like a little Allen wrench. And then I'll get um, some soapy water and I'll, I'll wash everything down. I'll dry it really well and I'll oil it. And I tend to do that, you know, on a once a year basis or between big projects. So like if I don't spin very often, I'll do it once a year. But if I'm going to spin like a sweater's quantity and it's like a really, um, you know, fuzzy yarn or something like that, I don't want the, the gears to get, you know, mucked up. So I'll make sure to go back in and clean it up. Okay, so does anyone have any other questions about electric spinning? I would love to see you. Um, I, sorry, I should have raised my hand or something. Oh, no, you're good, you're good. I would love to see you spin on the Nano for a little bit, if you can. Oh, sure, sure, not a problem. Let me just get I'm all the- I'm having so much trouble with the take up. <laughs> Yeah, um, it's it's one of those things that it's kind of hard to do in this format. So that's why most most of the um, the proposals that I submitted were more demonstration because I can't sit and help you out. And that's one of the things that I do miss about the in person format is being able to sit down because I, I find that so often um, the people that think that, you know, they're not a good spinner or they're not able to spin, it's really not anything that they're doing. It's just that the, there's something about their, the way that their wheel is set up or their spinner is set up that's causing that problem. So, um, I just, there was no way, I, I don't know how much the Hanson is, but I know that it's three or four figures. <laughs> yeah, it's about, like I said, it's about 1200 or so. Yeah, and I think there is a Kickstarter for like a, a more production version oh, of the Nano. Okay, like, it's coming out next year. What? No. The electric, you know, the people who make the Nano, I think, are making a bigger spinning wheel, um, and I think it's coming out like next year. So it might work better. For you. And I think it's only like still like two hundred dollars or something. Uh huh. That's nice. okay. So, oh, beautiful. <laughs> I can't even see your fiber <laughs> or your yarn. Oh, there you go. It's very quiet too. Yeah, that's the thing. So if yours is loud and I can make mine go faster so you can hear, that's, it shouldn't, I mean, it shouldn't really be um, clicking and clacking if it is. It either, something needs to be sanded down, something needs to be pushed in a little bit um, tighter or it needs to be oiled. Okay. Those would be the three things why it's, why it's loud. So that's how. All right. Well, mine right now is I cannot get it up to speed, even if I turn it all the way up. <laughs> that's can it, can it go, can it go up to speed when you don't have um, any of the brake bands on it? I didn't try. It did. I mean, it did. Yeah. I would say like to, 
kind of um, go through each of the parts, like take everything apart, you know, not, not, not take everything apart, um, like um, break it down. So like without yarn, does it work? If it doesn't work without yarn, then it's not the tensioning, you know what I mean? It's something else. So kind of, okay, you know, that's break good. it down that way. Yeah. And if you want, um, for anyone that's interested, because I know it's eight o'clock, so our time together okay. is over. But um, if anyone is interested, I do um, offer private lessons. So if there's something that you would like help with troubleshooting more one-on-one, -on -one, um, I'm happy to do so. Um, I also have some more workshops available on my website. So it's just up wait, over there, alanawilcox.com. And I'm also Spinny Buns on Instagram. So you can check out all of the fibery projects that I'm working on. And um, yeah, so I think tomorrow I'm doing um, spinning with fabric. So I don't know if any of you are going to be joining me, joining me for any other demonstrations or workshops this weekend, but I look forward to seeing you if you will be with me. So thanks so much. Yep, my pleasure, everybody. So I wish you all a lovely evening. If you have any um, questions, I'm happy to, to stick around. Um, but otherwise, I wish you a good night and I hope you have fun at the rest of the festival. Thanks a lot, Alana. All right, take care, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye. Yep, take care. <laughs>